I hope everyone is as nosy as I am and would find this interesting, but I would love to see what other people's digital gardens look like. So today I'm showing you what my digital garden looks like. I need time, just a little more time. I need time. Hoping it provides some inspiration. If you don't have a digital garden yet, make sure you download my template. I have a video on how my template works and I'll give a quick run through on why I made it, but it was following this concept of a digital garden where you go to expand on ideas and use your time when you're watching social media or consuming content to actually analyze it and put more thought into it and actually remember what you've been watching. And ever since I posted that video and I've made that template, I've continued to work on my digital garden and I'm really excited to show you guys where it's at it's not even been that long so yes if you've missed that first video make sure you go check it out i explain more in depth like what a seed is what growing is what bloomed is and how i made this database to have these ideas basically seeds when you first find something bloomed is when it's complete growing is the growing stage where you're still adding things to it i actually found it hard to mark anything as bloomed because i think you could go in more depth continuously with ideas but this is what my digital garden looks like everyone and as you can see i started around march i don't remember when i posted my video i think it was around I think oh I think it was that date March 7th because we went through an idea together and I have tried to amp up how much I've done recently partly because I wanted to show you guys how it's turning out and it was really good motivation but secondly I've actually just had a lot of fun with it. Like I have started to find podcasts that I never would have thought of listening to, books that I really want to read. There's actually so many PDFs of these books that I found online. And yeah, let's let's just go into it a little bit. I'll first show you guys, we'll pop open. So the cognitive load theory, if you watched my first video, remember I started looking at this on camera to show you guys how to use this database and how to take an idea from, I think I found it on Pinterest and expand on it further. But since then I added more ideas to it, have a better summary, talked about the sources a little bit further, some more key takeaways, personal reflections. I added more questions and future branches to explore. And you'll actually find I kind of changed the format of how I document everything. It's very different from the very first seed template. Here, I'll show you guys what I mean. Anyone who hasn't seen my first videos will probably be like, what the heck are you talking about? Do test, if I open this page. You'll see here, I made a seed template that goes with this. So it's a source, date, summary, your thoughts. I've kind of changed that as I've gone along. And that's partly because I've actually <laughs> used ChatGPT to help me with asking further questions and digging a little bit more and being like, okay, I found this source. What are some other sources I could explore? Which ChatGPT GPT is kind of interesting with that. It doesn't always give links that are real, but it does give kind of general ideas. And then I go and find uh, sources that relate to that. So for example, one that was kind of interesting because I had never really gotten into Substack newsletters. Yeah, I, I titled it The Quiet Revolution of Substack Newsletters because we hear about it a lot more. And yeah, kind of got a summary go some key takeaways. And then here's kind of like where ChatGPT would help me with some reflection questions as well and future branches to explore, which I really like because sometimes I take those and expand the digital garden. The forest keeps growing. So as you can see, these are my bloomed ideas. So these ones, I really liked this one, the evolution of aesthetic movements online. I, a lot of these topics relate to social media because my digital garden, as you know, from the first template video is very much, how can we take the time that we spend scrolling and turn it into something new Useful. So you'll see a lot of the topics relate to things that I naturally find online. It might be history, it might be fashion, it might be aesthetics, uh, growing on social media, all those different types of things. So yeah, that's kind of, you know, this is how Bloomed is looking. I thought this was really interesting to tie this in, like figuring out that trends are trauma responses in a way. Like if you think about the clean girl aesthetic, it really boomed during COVID when things were out of our control. So then we all went on social media to try to look like we're in control having a healthy lifestyle, having everything together. And then I thought it was interesting, maybe like the grunge indie sleaze. I think of even like the Tumblr grunge days from when I was like, I don't know, 12, 13, a teen. Life was a bit more structured and normal then perhaps. And people maybe were resisting that, going against those beauty standards. I thought it was really interesting to tie these things all in together. So this is generally how the bloomed ones look. And as you can see, I got quite a few bloomed. I feel like I've done what I'm comfortable with calling enough research into it, but again, you could keep these topics going forever. As you'll see here too, I do put summary pieces in there and I've put thoughts for, I think all the bloomed ones, but I haven't put my thoughts in until I'm done with the growing and they've turned into bloomed and the seeds will be quite a while yet. There are some relevant links. What I have found a little bit tricky and maybe I should go back through things as they've bloomed is making connections. So for example, which one was this? Tension is a currency. So I made a connection to podcast section. Oh, this was really interesting. Is it Esther? Esther? Pearl? Pearl? Hopefully I'm 
saying her name correctly, I kind of went down a rabbit hole of listening to her podcasts. Very fascinating, like amazing advice and knowledge on relationships and what people look for in relationships. As she says, like this is the podcast reflection on her view on modern love. It did kind of tie into attention as a currency and the evolution of fame in a way because it's the way that we interact with others and how we see ourselves. So this bloomed idea ended up connecting to that. And I really want to form more connections with my ideas. Again, ChatGPT might actually help me with that because it helps me with reflection questions and maybe I can tie those into different ideas. But yeah, let's take a look now at one of the growing ideas I have, oh, I really liked this one, Third Spaces Online. So yeah, the general question was how do Discord servers, niche, niche forums, or substacks replicate the magic of coffee shops or public libraries? So kind of like us finding a safe haven online of people discussing ideas or deep diving into things or finding support. And I found some really interesting, oops, this is not YouTube. That was an article. Where am I going with this? Yeah, I found some interesting articles to back this up, but really this idea came from looking at like the niche forums on Reddit. I don't really go on Discord that much, but I've tried to explore that and Substack further since looking into all of this. And yeah, just kind of figuring out like what these spaces are really giving to us and like what we're taking away from them. Like I like here like the qualities of a of the third space. And yeah, I, I I found even in this my thoughts on what how I want to build a community even here on YouTube and what people are looking for and where they find value. So I did really like, you know, exploring further reflection questions on this. And then I even thought about like containers to build over time. So like a third space audit, my ideal third space map, like what it would look like if I wanted a community on a certain place, whether that's Discord or Reddit or Substack and the design elements. So I had really a lot of fun with that, but that's still growing as you can see. That wasn't even the one I was thinking of actually. Was it this one, micro communities? Oh, I think it was this one. This one's, this one's bloomed. <laughs> because I put a lot of work into this one. This was kind of a similar idea. It's the rise of micro communities in the digital wild. So kind of going through further ideas, which I kind of tied in more to the third spaces online, but like a micro community builder template in Notion, like what it would look like if I wanted to plan one out. And then also like what it would look like if I wanted to build one on Discord, which is all brand new to me. So ChatGPT actually helped me with like planning this kind of layout out, um, just playing with ideas of this. Don't know if I'd ever use it in the future, but again, it's amazing how it can come from just like a few things you see online and then taking that and putting more research into it and doing a deep dive. And I, I think what this template has shown me too is how much time I spend on social media because look at how much deep diving I was able to do. Like I, I naturally already do that, but it feels more purposeful that I'm now creating ideas or exploring ideas. These may become YouTube videos. I mean, honestly, if you guys are looking at this list right now and you're like, that sounds really interesting, Alice. I would love to hear your take on that or like what you kind of gathered from that. Let me know <laughs> because some of these might become YouTube videos because it's just like me pouring thoughts and pulling resources together and putting something all in, in one space. And uh, yeah, that's why I really hope to make more connections between these things as well. This was another one I liked too, which was digital main character syndrome, kind of exploring that trend. Something that I've kind of thought about is, you know, is the main character syndrome narcissism? Like, is it narcissism to the extreme or is it a healthy thing? Yeah, I, I've really enjoyed exploring that as well. Again, not, not completed with these, but if you want to see something even less completed, then you want to take a look at my seeds. So again, if you haven't watched my first video explaining the template, seed is when you first find the idea. So some of them I might come back to, um, some of them I just maybe ran out of time to deep dive on. I think quite a few of them I'm going to come back to though and really try to make them a bloomed idea, complete them. So for example, I like this one, exploring cottage core as digital escapism. This was another TikTok trend, kind of, I would say lockdown COVID times, it was like booming. And I do think it kind of relates to like animal crossing aesthetics and games that bring that coziness across. Uh, but it can also kind of tie into like the trad wife, if you guys are following those trends as well on TikTok, like moving back to traditional lifestyles, traditional femininity, as people like to say it as well. But yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> yes. My thoughts so far feel safe and gentle, but is it just escapist fantasy dressed up in mushroom emojis? Yeah. Anyways, I have to keep looking into this further, but I do think it's kind of interesting. Like, yeah, the romantic, the romanticization of pre-capitalist living, an algorithmic loop of visual calm. Is it a reaction to burnout? I think it might be in a way. I see myself being drawn to that more because of that. You know, soft living looks nice when you're busy working and just want to take it slow for a day. Oh, this was another interesting one that I want to explore more. The internet 
internet's obsession with decline narratives and even spotting that in myself. Like, why is it that we love, for example, I don't even know if this was a meme, this is just like an example. We used to be a proper country or the collapse of the American dream is a very common one. Late stage capitalism memes, just tweets again about eggs <laughs> being too expensive, why things are falling apart, why things were better in the past. But why is it that we also love to consume that content? Because I, I catch myself enjoying that as well. Decline narratives don't even have to just do with countries and economics, but also an individual. And like the internet loves to take down people as well. What are some other fun ones? I don't even know. Oh, this one was fun. Cause I think this one I really thought of as well when I was going on Pinterest to come up with house inspo, like deck decor inspo ideas for when I was decorating my apartment in my last video. But yeah, just kind of looking at the Pinterestification of Pinterest, Pinterestification of real life. Are we curating our way out of the moment? Kind of like the way we use it for weddings, dream kitchens. Um, yeah, like I said, decor or even like your aesthetic and the way you vlog even. I've seen that on there as well. Like the way you film things and the way you style yourself. The visual trends like the van life, cottage core home tours and things like that. Things that in the past you wouldn't see so much of and find yourself comparing to so much as well. And I think it's really interesting to see like we're almost taking all of that. Um, like I said in my thoughts, love curating my life. But sometimes I wonder if we're chasing a version of ourselves that only exists in a mood board. And I was trying to get that across to in one of my last videos where I talk about decorating my space to not get carried away with Pinterest because as I mentioned in that video, some of those photos are AI. A lot of them are just better lighting or sometimes it's just like different structure of a house that is just not something that you're going to be able to em emulate in your own space. So uh, another one that I, you know, <laughs> I've been thinking about with YouTube as well is the algorithm as God. Uh, do we treat the algorithm as God with worship, blame, the new invisible hand? And again, some of these really interesting books I actually find online. I haven't read through all of them, but I do as much as I can when I'm trying to deep dive. Um, so yeah, this is kind of interesting parallels. Like I like God is the feed. Um, religion is an algorithm, prayers, posts, like it is kind of, you know, an interesting way to look at it. Not that I necessarily believe that we're looking at it that way, but I thought it would be a cool idea to explore. And if we're looking at it that way, I think a similar one that I found was this one which is still growing. Parasocial relationships and ancient idol worship. <laughs> uh, are we replacing that? Like, are we as humans always looking for something to replace that in the modern age? And we see like, this is why I'm such a believer that history repeats. Like humans, we like to think we're so smart and so much better than we were in the past, but we're constantly repeating what we've done in the past in the future, just like with a different wrapper, like it's a different wrapping. You wouldn't recognize it fully, but you look at it and underneath the surface, it's the exact same thing. Yeah, anyways, <laughs> rambling, but I am rambling because these are all these random ideas that I have pulled from social media. You can see here, I, I ended up probably just picking the type as the main source that I relied on, um, but sometimes it's just the one that got the idea rolling. For example, cognitive load theory, I probably used Reddit more for exploring, but Pinterest is where it started. Um, some of these were videos that made me interested in it, TikTok, uh, shorts. I try to note down the source, like the original source, because I think it's really interesting to be like, wow, I pulled all of this together based off one little TikTok that just got some ideas rolling. So yeah, this is probably gonna be kind of a short video because I'm not gonna take you through every single one. I don't know if you find that that interesting, but I did want to just show you what your database could start to look like if you use this digital garden template. I also wanted to share some tips, like for example, me using ChatGBT to get some more ideas rolling, to suggest some other sources to look into once I have an idea from some content that I've looked at. And yeah, I just really wanted to share this. I know quite a lot of you came and found my channel through my first digital garden video where I shared the template. So I want this as almost like a little extra push of motivation to use that template if you've already downloaded it and see what you can make out of it. And if you're new to my channel and you haven't seen that yet, I'll also link the template here as well for you to download, but feel free to check out my first video that kind of goes a little bit more into depth about why I made the template and how to use it as well. But I think that's everything I have for you guys today. It's a rainy, moody day here today, which is why I was like, oh, this is a nice day for just doing a little bit of digital gardening and sharing it with you all. So yeah, again, let me know what one, let me know what other Notion templates you'd like to see. Cause I know a lot of you are Notion lovers coming across to my channel. Uh, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the club. Uh, I'm planning, I think actually to make a morning routine and a night routine template, like Notion templates that are flexible to those who, yeah, you'll see it in the future, but basically leaning into the idea of high energy days, low energy days, and picking the template that works like 
the structure that works for you that day. I'm walking through it. So fingers crossed, I'll get those out to you guys soon. But also if you want to see any of the ideas that I've pulled into my digital, digital garden further explored, please let me know. I would be happy to share what I've found and my thoughts on it. So yeah, that's everything I have for you guys today. Take care, happy digital gardening, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye friends. I need time, just a little more time. One more time. I need time.